looks like Honestly, we're missing. if it's okay, I can take a roll call. Yeah, um, let's let's go ahead and get started. So everyone, welcome to the Thursday, March 11th, uh, 2020 meeting of the Arizona State Board of Pharmacy. This is the task force convened to discuss uh, the fingerprint uh, clearance cards during renewal. Uh, apologize uh, to the public that we are starting late. It is 8.17. Uh, we were having issues with our YouTube streaming channel, so apologize for the late start, but again, you've not missed anything. Dr. Gandhi, can you go ahead and take the call to establish the quorum? Sir, uh, Ms. Wamsley? Present. Ms. Nair? Here. Mr. Okay. Mr. Morris? Here. Ms. Fine. Looks like she has not rejoined us. Yeah, I'll text her. Mr. I, Bozen? Kelly is rejoining uh, here. And Kelly okay. Fine is rejoining. She's just uh, having trouble uh, loading it. No problem. Mr. Musil? Here. Mr. Pond? Here. Okay, Mr. Blair. Mr. Blair was also having difficulty on texting him as we speak. So we do have a quorum, Madam Chair, at this time. Thank you, Dr. Gandhi. I appreciate it. Um, does anyone have any declarations of conflicts of interest before we move forward with our discussion? All right, hearing none. Um, Dr. Gandhi, before we get started, I see that your interns are joining. Would you like um, to have them introduce themselves for the group? Yeah, no, definitely. If you can, Heather, Amber. Guys are both on mute. Uh, hi, I'm... Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. All right. Um, I'm Amber Brandon, and I am a Midwestern student um, in my final year. And I'm Heather Tarasky. I am a U of A student in my final year as well. Thank you both. I appreciate it. Um, glad to have you today. Um, Dr. Gandhi, do you want to go ahead and um, start by setting up the issue and kind of um, giving us the foundation of where to start our discussion today? Certainly, uh, Madam Chair. And before I get into this subject matter that we have agendized, if I can uh, speak to you guys about uh, an emergency matter that just popped on my desk, if I can share my screen. Uh, I did run by the Attorney General's office and they said I can interject uh, since it's an urgent matter. Um, well, so Lynn, if you can make me co host so I can share a screen, please. Can you guys see this, guys? Yes. Okay. This letter was brought to my attention first thing this morning. Uh, it seems like uh, our licensees are receiving this letter, pretending to be the Board of Pharmacy, as you can see from the bottom. Uh, officer in charge is George Miller. Uh, Executive Director, I've been replaced by Kenneth Cleveland. Um, but it does look pretty official. Uh, the person that received this uh, letter was asked for uh, $10,000 to resolve this matter. Uh, we are drafting something to post on our website as we speak while this meeting is occurring, uh, as well as doing a blast email through all, to all the licensees. Um, but this is a national occurrence. Uh, there is some um, guidance sent out uh, on a national level in articles and any way possible, uh, but it seems like some folks are not getting that message. Uh, so we're gonna continue to reiterate this at every meeting that we have, uh, any newsletter we send out. And I think we probably in the best interest of protecting our licensees uh, is to send out periodic blast emails to, uh, to everybody involved uh, so that they can be aware of what's happening out there and they're not taken for 
checking for a ride. Any questions, guys? If you can think of any other ways we can reach uh, our licensees, uh, your thoughts would be helpful. Uh, Cam, I, this is Mark Bozen. I, as soon as Kelly Fine joins in, uh, certainly I, she can use her communication to the her membership and, and her website. Um, our law firm is, is happy to do a, a blog post about it. Um, uh, and uh, those are some ideas. I did redact the pharmacist information. So I'll send this, uh, this letter to you guys just as a reference point. An event you want to attach it to your uh, to your memo or anything that you're sending out. Cam, thank Dr. you for Gandhi. doing that. Will you be sending that out uh, today? Ah, uh, yes, it'll go out today. Thank you, Dr. Gandhi. I appreciate you bringing this to the public's um, uh, attention. I, I certainly think this is concerning. It's something that I've heard happening in a number of other states, so I don't think it's unique to Arizona, but. Uh, certainly very concerning because this does look like an official document if you uh, aren't aware of um, some of the per some of the other particulars like for example your name so um, uh, I, I think it would also be a good idea in addition to some of the other channels to, to get it out to the larger employers in the state uh, mm -hmm. just to make sure that they are all aware too so I'm sure Kelly can help with that as well as the contacts that you already have so having that information redacted I think would be very helpful. We will do that thank you. All right, so moving back to our agenda, um, just as a backstory, guys, we are going through a sunset review, and one of the identifiers recommendations by the Auditor General was to uh, address the fingerprint clearance card. Uh, we do we do collect the fingerprint clearance card uh, on an initial application for all licensees, including uh, some designated representatives. Uh, this year, we have legislation to encompass all the other designated representatives we missed the first time. Uh, but their recommendation was to collect the fingerprint clearance card on all renewals as well. Um, so that's the backstory. And thus this uh, task force meeting, we did advise them that uh, I'm not uh, given the liberty of changing the way we do things without board approval and without task force involvement. Uh, so we, we did direct them and advise them that we will be hosting a task force meeting. And uh, here we are. So with that backstory and what, our, what the recommendation is, I'll, I'll throw it out to you guys for discussion. Thank you, Dr. Gandhi, for that, um, for that recap and summary to get started here. Um, task force members, um, definitely interested in your perspective on uh, this particular matter. Um, does anybody want to go first and kind of share their thoughts on uh, the potential proposal at hand here? Madam Chair, just for a record, Kelly Fine is joined. Thank you. Lori, I'll speak if no one else will first. Thank you, Roger. Um, I think it's a undue burden on the pharmacy community. I think it's an additional expense that does not uh, benefit the public to any significant way. We're running the checks on everybody um, up front when they're getting their licensure. They all have obligations to report. Every other licensee has obligations to report if they become aware of someone else who is engaged in appropriate conduct. I just think it's a huge additional expense uh, for the pharmacists, the technicians, the interns, for the board, and I don't see the benefit to the public. Thank you, Mr. Morris. Um, Ms. Swansley, this is John Yussel. Hi. Uh, I agree with Roger, and, and I'd be very concerned about the Solicitor General's opinion on doing these background checks and, and whether or not other licensing boards are required to do the same. Thank you, Mr. Musil. This is Kristen. Uh, what states already do this? I know I believe- Morning, Texas. everybody. Hi, Mike. How are you? Hello, Mr. Blair. What, um, so it's Texas, I believe, has this in place. And um, I'm just curious, what are the pros? I kind of already hearing the cons, but does anybody have anything that would be in the pro column? 
This is Chan, Madam Chair. Um, I don't know if there is really an advantage. We do have certain things, measures and statutes in place that uh, allow other licensees um, to report into the board in an event someone's a public threat, right? Uh, so if, if Mr. Musil is licensed, Kristen, you're licensed, you have an obligation to the board to notify Mr. Morris if he uh, created some sort of felony that's gonna impact the public. Um, so we have we have those measures in place already. Um, this is another a clearance card. I'm not sure if you guys are aware. From the time you uh, get a clearance card to the time it expires, it's a six year cycle. And so now it's another mechanism for someone to have to remember to renew that every six years as well. Um, and if they don't, then they won't be able to renew their license. And so you can see the cascade effect of another thing that someone has to do, right? Um, so those are just my thoughts. Uh, I think we already have measures in place, um, but uh, I think this meeting is about you guys and your thoughts. So Cam, can you repeat that? It, how would we be notified if someone, let's say, committed a crime tomorrow that's a pharmacist? If they committed a crime, obviously it's gonna be published somewhere. Um, they have an obligation to let their employer know they have an obligation to let us know if they've been charged. The individual has that responsibility. There's also responsibility with other licensees to report that individual to the board if they're unfit to practice and unsafe to practice out there. This is Mark Bozen, uh, echoing Roger, uh, uh, Dr. Musil and, uh, and um, Cam. Wait is is enforced uh, more rigorously by this board than any boards. And 323208 is is what Cam is referring to. Uh, not only is there an obligation to report a conviction of a crime, uh, 323208 says you've got to report the charge. Uh, meaning, for, you have 10 days from the moment you're arrested and accused of a crime to report that incident to the board of pharmacy. And because of the proficient uh, enforcement of, of that by this board, um, you've created a culture of self-reporting uh, that, that our law firm uh, sends lots of reports uh, of pharmacists self-reporting arrests uh, and of misdemeanors and, and other crimes. Uh, the, to, to, to Cam's point, um, the, the serious crimes uh, are available and, and uh, on the internet, um, publicly available. One of our clients um, is uh, who, who was recently adjudicated by the board. Um, he uh, he did not realize his his obligation under 32 3208, and uh, and the inspectors found his information on the internet and uh, and pursued that in a timely manner uh, and uh, addressed the issue. I, I think this is a, a solution looking for a problem. Um, and uh, if, if board staff doesn't feel um, that they're missing a tool in their toolbox, then, uh, then I'm clear on why the solicitor general would, would want to do this, or I'm sorry, the auditor general. And, uh, and, and furthermore, um, the cost to the taxpayer, I, I, if, if it, particularly catching up Pharmacists like myself, who, who've been licensed for 25, 26 years, uh, for, for, for the board staff to have to process and keep track of and, and catch up with all of the people who've, who've, who've never had to submit a fingerprint clearance card um, would be a burden that, that, that I don't think is responsible to spend licensing fees on. There are more important problems during a pandemic, more important problems. Uh, we're still in, in, in an opioid crisis. Uh, let's, let's spend the, the money that the board has on things that are truly a benefit to the public and protect the public. Thank you, Mr. Bozeman. Ms. Fine, anything you'd like to add to the discussion? Just to reiterate, I, I agree with comments already. I, I feel it would be an unnecessary burden to licensees and also a burden on board staff to have to maintain and monitor and keep track of everybody. And so I think that would get in the way of people getting licensed in a timely manner, which could negatively impact um, 
our pharmacies and patient safety because if we don't have adequate staff, there's other implications that can result in that. So I don't, I don't see any benefit in doing that. I think the procedures we have in place now and people uh, self-reporting, um, you know, we're hoping to get the word out about that, reminding people ourselves. So I don't see um, a benefit or a need um, to do this. Thank you, Ms. Fine. Uh, Mr. Bond, anything from your perspective to add to the conversation? Uh, I, I would like to um, just reiterate and agree with what Mark presented, that this really looks like a solution looking for a problem. And the amount of unnecessary burden on taxpayers, on the board, on pharmacists, especially pharmacists licensed in multiple states, it becomes very difficult to manage all of the different tasks. And I have no clarity on uh, the true problem that has been presented that this is a solution for. And I think our efforts and money and time and talents can be used in better places than this. Thank you, appreciate that, Mr. Bond. Uh, Mr. Blair, anything from your perspective to add to the conversation? I think you're the only one I haven't heard from yet. Yeah, no, I'm I'm pretty much in agreement with everything that's been said to this point. So there's no, uh, I, there's, I have no, I have no additional icing to add to the cake. Thank you, Mr. Blair. Um, I, I am also of the opinion that I don't necessarily think that this is a necessary change. I think we have a lot of mechanisms in place for self-reporting, either by the individual or by the individual individual's um, employer. Um, even outside of just the criminal convictions, I think of the notifications that we get that before they're even necessarily charged with something, uh, diversion type cases, individuals that have um, impairment at work, all those types of things uh, may not even rise to the level of criminal con criminal charges, but uh, employers self-report self those uh, regarding their employees all the time. So I agree. Um, well, uh, I think it's important that we have the fingerprint clearance card for the initial licensure um, to ensure that individuals entering into our practice um, are safe and and, effect and and able to practice. I don't think it's a necessary um, additional step to our to our licensees or for our taxpayers to, to have to deal with. Um, so hearing that there is uh, doesn't appear to be any opposing uh, uh, opinions here, I assume, uh, Dr. Gandhi, you would like a recommendation of the committee to take to the full board as we discuss this at a future meeting? I would. And just for the record, Madam Chair, uh, obviously this task force, should have said this in the beginning, was uh, we wanted the input from various different sources. You know, we have a hospital representative, Mr. Pond, we have retail representative, we have Mr. Bozen and Mr. Morris representing many different industries. Uh, Mr. Muso, who uh, has still a foot in the pharmacy industry and, and other ventures. Uh, so he's seeing it from a different perspective, um, almost industry lines. And then Ms. Fine, of course, uh, representing a number of different business sources as well as including licensees. So I think uh, this, this a group of people gathered here today represent majority of, of the industry. Uh, and their input was, was valuable. I whole, wholeheartedly agree. So um, I, speaking, I guess, for the group, um, I think our recommendation is that there's no change needed, that our current processes are sufficient and um, would the task force would like the board to take no action. Is that correct? If it's okay with you, Madam Chair, I'll just go down the line and that way it's official. Yes, go ahead. Okay, Ms. Wamsley. Yes. Pull up this, I don't forget anybody's name here. Ms. Nair. Aye. Mr. Morris. Aye. Ms. Fine. Aye. Mr. Bozen. Aye. Uh, Mr. Blair. Aye. Mr. Musil? Aye. And Mr. Pond? Aye. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Dr. Gandhi, is there any additional business for today? No, uh, there isn't. I just, I'll circle back with Kelly. I know she missed a couple of minutes in the beginning about the scam alert uh, that we need to send out and uh, 
the memo, the, the letter that's going out there, that's really concerning. So I'll circle back with you, Kelly, in a little bit here. Um, All right. Um, thank you, task force members. I appreciate your time and dedication to, to helping us uh, provide the recommendation to the board. So thank you for your time today and participation. Uh, hearing no other business, uh, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. everyone.